All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the game development series where I teach you how to make a 2D tower defense game in Unity using their Unity game engine, of course. All right, so in the last episode, we made a map generator script that would generate an 8x8 map, and as you can see, um, it would generate a map, and it will just look like this. It, it may look different. It will all be random. Now you may notice that there is a green and red thing right here. These are just to designate the start and end. And basically what I did was if I go into my Unity script, scroll all the way to the top, you can see un under the path color variable, there is now two new variables called public color start color and public color end color. These, this is the color that will be the start tile and this is the color that will be the end tile. So how I do that, is at the end of the script under this for each loop right here, which has given a, which changes all the path tiles to the correct path color. We just do start color start tile dot dot at component sprite renderer dot color equals start color and the same thing for the end tile, and that should be that. All right, in this episode, however, we are going to be implementing the enemies that will travel along our path and will reach the end. So. To get started, we first need to create the prefab that we can that we can instantiate for the enemies. So what I'm going to do is go into my sprites folder right here, drag my um, square square um, sprite, and I'm just going to edit this. So I'm going to make this half size, so just set all the transform components to 0 0.5. Then I'm going to make this um, a red color to show that um, it's an enemy, of course. And I'm just gonna name this basic enemy, like so. And that should be about it for right now. So what we can do is just go into our prefabs folder, drag it in, there we go. Now we have a basic enemy prefab and we can get rid of that. So now we have this enemy prefab here. All right, now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go into our scripts folder, right click, go to create, C sharp script. And I'm, and I'm going to name this enemy. So we're just going to open this up in Visual Studio. Here we go. So for this, I'm going to implement um, something called in, called inheritance. It is a very common uh, thing to do in um, in um, what am I thinking of? In uh, in objective-based languages, and basically what it does is that um, it will let you take a class and its variables and its functions, and the subclass will also have those. I can put a link in the description if, if you need to learn some, but I think I will do an okay job explaining it right here. All right, so to get started, the first thing you want to add is one variable, and this will be um, private float, and this will be the enemy health. And then what we want to add is another float, it's going to be private float uh, movement speed. This will be the movement speed of the enemy, how fast it will move from tile to tile. And then for future, we want to do private uh, int um, kill reward, which will be how much money you get from killing it. And then private int damage, which will be the amount of damage it does to the player when it reaches the end. So I'm just going to add some comments. Amount of damage the enemy does when it reaches the end. And then the amount of money the player gets when this enemy is killed. All right, that is good, 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 good. So the next step is we want to um, add the start. So we can just use that for um, initialization. And under here, I'm going to do private void initialize enemy. And then under it, I'm going to do private void move enemy. And I'm going to take two values of vector two. Well, just one value, sorry. I'm going to take one vector two, and that is going to be the target position. So in under that, we're going to do private void update. And then inside here, we need to reference the map tiles. And to do that, we're going to go into our map generator script, go all the way to the top, and simply, instead of private, 
uh, list game object map tiles. We're going to do public static for both of these. Like so. So it should look like this now. Public static list game object map tiles. And then public static list game object path tiles. That should, it should look like this now. And then under this, we're going to do public static game object. No, no list this time. We're going to name it start tile. And then public static game object end tile. Now, you may remember that under here, whoa, under here, we named a local variable start tile. Now, we can just get rid of these two variables, which would be under your list top edge tiles and bottom edge tiles. Just get rid of that, like so. You can see there's no errors, and it should still work. So if we just let it compile here, it should still work. As you can see, the start tile is colored and the end tile is colored, which tells us that it is still working, which is all good and dandy. So now, uh, into the enemy script, in this private, private void update, we want to check if our enemy has reached its current tile. And what we're going to do is have private void check position. And then in your variables, you're going to add a private game object, and this is going to be the target tile. All right. So if you need to, just pause this video right now. Copy all this so you are up to date. And now that you have copied all this, we are going to go into our initialize enemy script. And firstly, what, what we're going to do is do target tile dot, um, or sorry, target tile equals map generator dot start tile. And that should be it for now. And then inside our move enemy script, we are going to do, in fact, we don't even need this target position. Never mind. Private void move enemy will be transform dot position. Uh, equals vector three dot move towards and we're going to do um, transform dot position comma target tile dot position or sorry target tile dot transform dot, dot position and then our movement speed times time dot delta time and then inside our check position we're going to do if uh, target tile it's not equal to null, and our target tile is not equal to end tile. Uh, map generator dot, dot end tile, sorry. Then uh, we're going to make a float um, distance, which will be transform. Uh, sorry, parentheses transform dot position minus target tile dot transform dot position dot magnitude and then if this distance is less than let's say 0 0.01 which is a very small distance then we will go with um so what we're going to do is if our um if we've reached the cur the current tiles position we're going to first make an int called current index and this will be e equal to map generator dot path tiles dot index of and then our target tile plus one so what this is doing is at this top right here we are going to check if the target tile is actually in existence which is what this part does and then we're checking if it isn't the end tile because if it is the end tile then we will get an error because it's trying to step forward into a non-existent tile because the end tile is the end and then inside this block we are, we are doing we are calculating the distance between um, the enemy's current current position and the and the current target tiles position taking the magnitude which is just the distance which, which is why it's a float and then right here we're checking if the distance is less than a super small value and if it is then we will uh, in here set the target tile to the next one so the reason why we're getting current index is actually get get rid of this plus one so it should look like this instead so the current index is our, our target tile is going to be part of this uh, path tiles list inside our map generator, which is why we can do this I index of. So basically, this will return if it's the start tile, it will be zero. If it's the second tile, it will be one, so on, so forth. 
So what so what we're actually gonna set it to is the target tile. The target tile equals map generator dot path tiles and then do current index plus one because you want to get the next tile and that should um, do it so what we're going to do is in our private void update we are going to first uh, check the position and then after that we're going to move the enemy and in the private void start just initialize the enemy right here all right your script should be looking like this at this point right now. If it doesn't, copy it. All right, that should be enough time for you to copy it. Now go back into your Unity engine here. Go to Prefabs, go to Basic Enemy, and drag it into our scene right here. So you can see it on both screens right here. And then drag the, um, the enemy script onto it. And then you will notice in, in your in your inspector here you will notice this override button click click on that and press apply all and then delete it and then if you go back into your prefabs you you should see your enemy script is now on the prefab now you will notice that we don't have any of those variables so how to fix that is for right now all we're going to do is do square brackets serialize field and square brackets serialize field so just put um this above um, the enemy hell variable and above the movement speed variable. And now if you go back into your uh, game engine here, go into your en enemy prefab, scroll down, you should see we have enemy health and movement speed. So I'm just gonna set this to right here. Uh, I'm gonna do 50 health and 0 0.5 mo movement speed. And you won't see that it is that one is spawned right now, but if we drag one into the scene, you will notice that Oh boy, look, it's actually moving through the tiles. So now that we have enemies moving through the tiles, we need to implement the death and all that. So we're just going to go into here. We're going to, uh, let's say, under the initialize enemy void, we're going to do private void um, take damage. We're just going to pass through a, an amount to take. Oh, this should actually be a public void, not a private one. So make sure to change that if you're following along. So public void, take damage, float amount. And then inside of here, we're just going to do um, enemy health minus equals amount. And then under that, we're going to do if enemy health is less than or equal to zero, then we will uh, basically run a function that kills the enemy. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another void right below that and do private void die. And all this is gonna do is um, enemy just destroy the game object actually. So just do destroy uh, transform dot game object. And make sure to call it like so. And that should be uh, the what, what we need to do. Now for right now, what I'm gonna do is inside the um, update, I'm going to just take damage zero, and that will basically just run it and check if we are um, at, or, at or below zero. So if we just drag it in, the enemy will move along its path, and then if I set the enemy health to zero, you can see it dies. Very, very awesome. And that is the, that, that, that is the core functionality of the enemy um, done. It moves, it... Um, it, yeah, it, it moves. It has health that that we can damage it, and if it and if it goes below zero, it can die. It has a custom movement speed, and there is a kill reward and damage that will be used later. So that that all wraps it. That about wraps it up for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. In in the next video, we will be implementing towers, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Join my Discord server. But anyways, I'll see you guys later. Bye.